And now, live from our Smokehouse studio, it's time for Real Estate Jerky. All your real estate questions answered by our provocatively lean expert hosts, Edward Ed Parco, MBA, veteran, and president of Lending for Living. We'll give you something to chew on. Real Estate Jerky is on now. That's my California. Thanks for joining us here on Real Estate Jerky. I'm your host, Ed Parco, president of Lending for Living, along with my trusty sidekick, Marlene Chaplin. And we're on the road keeping you up to date and on real estate and what's happening in the communities. Our studios, where we have a solid Wi-Fi connection and our fabulous engineer, Mike Murray, and the rest of the supporters, friends at iHeartMedia. We always give you something to chew on here at Real Estate Jerky. You can call or text me at 209-404-1915 or email us at radio at Real Estate Jerky with all your questions. Hello, Marlene. We're going to be talking to one of our candidates for California State Senate District 4 in a bit. But first, let's talk about real estate and all things that are happening right now. Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, what is, what is, what is going on? Um, good grief. Well, off mic, we were talking about the interest rate. <laughs> yeah, but let's talk about one thing. Opportunity is going on right now. Talk about opportunity. There's always opportunity, especially. No, no, what's happening right now darkest. is. Yeah, we, um, the issue is, so everybody's so worried about, you know, they're thinking 2006, 2008, the whole thing and rates went up a little bit, right. And it took out a lot of people, people are putting their house on the market and they're getting seven showings and one offer. So the opportunity is as a buyer, you can get that house that you have not been able to get for the last two years now. So don't hide in the sand, put your head in the sand, you get out there, keep looking, you could be able to qualify where someone said we're we have a 50 50 chance we're in a recession right now i'm like yeah i think we have a 50 50 chance we're not in a recession right now but i think we're in a recession we just don't know it and that means what marlene what happens in a recession yeah opportunity that's right well, rates go down slow down rates go down yeah. yeah things things slow down um prices go down so even though the rates are have gone up um the the pricing is flattened out and in some cases improved for real estate well, they're pricing um, it at the right price instead right. of expecting 50000 over. They're, you know, they right. take their offer a little bit more over. Um, it's just an opportunity that people aren't jumping on, and you need to jump on the opportunity right now. Because eventually, we can refinance you. Somebody can down the road to get you to that lower rate. That's what you have to look at. I can get my house. Or now. or or you're going to be looking at it because the rate's at 7.5 going cha-ching. I mean, here's the thing. Cha-ching. <laughs> Yeah, to change. Like oh, you mean? Oh, movies. I made the right decision. Yes. Okay, kind of, yes. okay gotcha. I don't <laughs> no. know about seven and a half um, for regular rates, but because of what I'm saying is, I see already the Fed's going to. They did a half. They're going to probably come back and do another three quarters, which they need to yeah. do, which is going to yep. solidify the fact that we're going to go in a recession. And by October, November, I think we're going to see a drop in rates. I'm going the other way. So, but don't wait for that because then everybody's going to jump on the bandwagon again, like they did in and 20. Pricing's going to go up. And yep. yep. I mean, this so, is an opportunity. Take advantage of it. And especially yep. if you're looking, you know, a lot of this inflation, I don't mean gas prices are way high, right? Diesel yeah. is ridiculous. Um, yeah. Everything's ridiculous. Prices of everything's up. Go to the, you go out to eat. It's no longer your meal, 20 bucks. It's 40 bucks for your meal. If you go out to eat, it's ridiculous. So I, a lot of the older people are telling me that they're really having trouble. And so I've been doing a lot more reverse mortgages, reverse even mortgages. more than I did early on two months ago because of that. They want to have them in place just in case. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yep. I mean, uh, there's a lot of opportunity right now. Um, and the thing about inflation, every time prices never go back down to what they were before it started. No. They may go down, but they're going to go higher before that happens. I mean, that's just, and what are you waiting on? I mean, okay. uh, one of my, uh, they're going to be guests on the show uh, in, a, I don't know, three weeks or so, but Thomas Pools and Spas, um, it's slowed down a little bit and it's like, oh, okay, people, but why? What are you waiting for? You think the supplies are going to go down? The price of it's going to go down? No. The interest rate, if you have to borrow money. Oh, Ed, can you help with that, by the way? Yes, I can. What's 
Yeah. So if somebody wants to build a pool, I mean, yeah. they offer financing. You have two ways to but- do it. You can do a HELOC, right? A line of credit and get the money out that way. Problem with that is every time the Fed raises, that rate goes up. Um, and that's and the HELOCs are based off of 30 years, but the first 10 years is interest only. And so right after that, then your payment, when you have to actually pay it back over the next 20 years, triples. And the people then call me and go, my payment's not 800 bucks. Can you help me? And I always tell them it might be smarter to start with a refinance, but you know, it just depends on where you are and what your interest rate is. So. You're listening to Real Estate Jerky here on Power Talk 1360 KFIV with our host, Ed Parco, MBA veteran, mortgage advisor, and president of Lending for Living. If the recent turn of events with the economy and inflation has you reevaluating reevaluating your retirement, a reverse mortgage might just be exactly what you need. Uh, You can reach out to Ed at 209-404-1915. That's 209-404-1915 or visit lendingforliving.com. Or you can email us at radio at realestatejerky.com. Hey, speaking of emailing us, um, a shout out to Marilyn Maines, our listener who uh, got Chad Condit on uh, the Real Estate Jerky Live. That was kind of amazing. And we are uh, hearing from quite a few of the candidates because of um, listeners like Marilyn, who are relying on you, Ed, to educate them about all of our issues and stuff. How do we go from being a real estate show to a political show? It's community. How did that happen? It's community. Happen? It's not, we're not a political show. We just want to make sure that you vote you understand what you're voting for and who you're voting for. Cause it's about your yes. community and that's why we have them on. I'm just yeah. glad they finally realized that we're important to them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I think that though, the, the justification also though is because so much of the real estate industry is dictated, unfortunately these days by politics, it shouldn't be, but it oh, is look interest rates, right. And kill it is. Yeah. Look what just happened with interest rates. I mean, well, how regulations starts are down. Other things are down. You need, I never thought po- being political, having that anything would affect my business, but it affects my business drastically when you yeah. have the wrong person in charge doing these weird things. And we just need to get back to where it's a, you know, California is about business, about people and growth and not the way it is now. Making California golden again. That's, what, like Ed, that. that's what Ed Park is about. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, it's nice to have, I mean, we do, I don't know if our listeners know, but we, I do a lot of lives under real estate jerky a week. Uh, I think this week I did nine of them, um, two, two political 11 AMs on Tuesdays and Thursdays and the five every morning ish, we do one about what's going on in the market. So there's a lot of stuff going on. So just be Mm -hmm. not just our radio show, but we do a lot of additional stuff afterwards. Yeah. So, um, and then uh, politics and how how crazy it is. Uh, the guests that we have coming on today, uh, you had them on real estate jerky, um, live on Facebook and we immediately got comments. Um, and I want to deal with this because in case somebody doesn't know, uh, the rhetoric from the other party is that he's been disbarred and that's not true. It's a lie. Really? Uh, our, 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 uh, candidate, our guest today, Judge um, Stephen Bailey, who's uh, running for um, Senate District 4. No, yes, District 4. And um, that was the one that got redistricted originally, Josh Harder, who is currently District 4, but it's no longer that district. It's crazy redistricting. Um, so there's a whole lot of candidates in this race, Democrat and Republicans. But the thing about Judge Bailey is he is I, he says he's a policy guy and I agree, but he's really an activist. Um, he represented, for example, our, um, the, uh, school board in, in Turlock, uh, that they, that they banned him from, um, because he didn't want to wear a mask because he did want to wear a mask. Yeah. He represents, uh, judge Bailey represented him. Um, and I think he stands other... for law and order more than anything else. Would you yes. agree with that? Yeah, I do. What's best for the, so, what's but best what they for the did community. Was, what's best for the community with laws and orders so that we all can not get hurt. Yeah. And that's um, his, a big part of his platform. So consequently they came after him and imply that he's been disbarred. He has not, right. he's well, not of course they're gonna make statements. Nobody's going to research it. 
I did because whenever that would take time, (laughs) we had the audience come on and start making comments on the posts of the video. And I was like, what do you mean disbarred? That would be, he, he wouldn't be able to run. Um, if that was the case, because that means that there'd be some kind of felony or breaking of the law. Well, it's, it's, yeah. Well, how's he representing clients if he was disbarred? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, the other thing, but you're I mean, right. about the they law count and order. On people right? not, not, not researching. They count on people. Bully. I think it's a bullying tactic. Well, yeah, but not everybody's going to go away because of that. And then thank goodness he didn't. But the thing about we're, I was talking about law and order and how it's important to get rid of these stupid laws that they put into place to let people out early. Jeff Dirksy, Sheriff Dirksy put a post about this one guy who had gotten out early and went and killed, you know, did some other stuff. And it's like, we need to stop this. Yes. That's why we need candidates um, like the judge and other people who are about law and order to get us back to a safe environment. Mm -hmm. I agree. Don't you agree? 100%. I totally agree. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, let's get to him. Uh, it's keeping <laughs> we're keeping our promises to all the home buyers and potential home buyers out there and our friends here in Stanislaus County and our outlying signal area area completely informed about all the candidates in the upcoming California elections. Because frankly, if we don't, who will? Yeah. And our California, the one we love, the golden state of regular people like you and me, can't stand much more of this abuse. She's taken over the past 20 years. So if you've got questions, we really hope you do. Please dial Ed at 209-404-1915. That's 209-404-1915. And who's Ed Parco anyway? Well, he's our host. He's amazing. He's an MBA. He's a veteran of the U.S. Navy. He's a mortgage expert. He's president of Lending for Living. Plus, Ed cares so much that he's doing all these great educational programs now, trying to make our community the best place to live in California. So if that's what you want to then keep listening to Real Estate Jerky here on Power Talk 1360 KFIB. We'll be right back with our next guest, Judge Stephen Bailey, candidate for California Senate District 4. So don't go away. You can change the way you live out the rest of your life with our new reverse mortgage products from Lending for Living. Our loan limits are the highest available. Call us today at 209-846-9270 or visit LendingForLiving.com. Welcome back. I'm Marlene Champlin, sidekick to our amazing host, Ed Parco, here at Real Estate Jerky on Power Talk 1360 KFIV, where we always give you something to chew on. Questions or comments for Ed, just dial 209-404-1915. That's 209-404-1915 or visit LendingForLiving.com. Now, let's hurry up and get to our guest so we can take our time with what he's got to say, and that is candidate for California State Senate District 4, Judge Stephen Bailey, and that's retired, but I was taught to say, Judge, once you earned the title. Welcome, Judge Bailey. Thank you for having me. I kind of want to reiterate what Marlene was saying about how do you want, you know, I want to thank you for being on the show today, Judge Bailey, but how do you want us to address you today? Uh, Any way you want. I, I answer to anything that somebody says. (laughs) <laughs> All right, but we just have to, if we say judge, we have to say retired. So everybody knows that you're retired. Oh, right. Occasionally, okay. but it makes everybody happy if they know that um, I was a judge, but I am retired now. Because right. <laughs> I mean, I when you're a president, you're always a president. So you're not a judge, always a judge. Well, you're always a judge. You mm-hmm. always carry that title. But, you know, reality is, is that if you're retired, you don't want um, to be running for a partisan office. Um, The judiciary should be uh, nonpartisan, transparent. You ought to have confidence that decisions are not made on a partisan basis. And I think it is important that the public know that I was a judge, spent eight and a half years on the El Dorado County Superior Court, uh, retired in 2017, um, ran for California Attorney General in 2018, and am a candidate this year for District 4 State Senate, um, and I'm a retired judge. All right, I want to go back to something you said. You said should be partisan. Should not be partisan. All right. Let's let's make that clear. <laughs> so what I'm getting at is you're, so the currently it's not the way it should be? Is that what we're saying? That, uh, <laughs> well, I, I like, that. you know what, I, Ed, I like 
um, I got to talk to Judge Bailey a lot more than you did. And, and what I liked that you said when we were talking was why you decided to retire from the bench and run. Well, there, is, there was a good reason for it. Um, and I guess it's twofold. Um, there are, there's a significant amount of politics that goes on while you're on the bench. Um, and those politics are somewhat internal within the bench. Um, there was a considerable amount of arguing and fighting among uh, jurists over, you know, as it always turns out to be, the uh, budgets. Um, and at, at a point in time, you get tired of that. But the real issue of, that caused me to retire was looking at where California public policy was going, um, changes that were being made that um, I felt were not in the best interests of the public. Um, we made, and frankly, we were lied to by uh, politicians out of Sacramento when they were trying to sell us uh, decriminalizing theft and decriminalizing drugs. Um, they wrote a, a ballot title and summary that there's no way to characterize it. It didn't make the street safer or the schools safer. And that's what they promised us. Uh, they promised that, that we were going to have all this savings and they were going to give it to local government so that local government could uh, create programs uh, against recidivism. Um, they never delivered on that. It was a complete lie out of Sacramento. But what we did get uh, when we reduced theft crimes, we got, and it, again, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. What we got was more theft. And all you have to do is turn the TV on uh, and watch the smash and grabs taking place all over California. Uh, that is a direct result of changes that were made in Prop 47. And don't tell me that, there, that drugs aren't a vic are a victimless crime because there's never been a situation where the, the addict himself or herself is a victim, but moreover, the family of those addicts are victims. And ultimately we get to the situation that we have not made California better with the changes that we made uh, to public safety. And um, just looking back at the crimes coming out of Sacramento this week, where, you know, yes. a, yes. Uh, in, yes. a former inmate was yep. released six years early. He was a yep. violent criminal. He was yep. sent to prison for a reason. A judge made the decision that the person should spend 10 years in state prison. And what do they do? They let him back out on the street. He goes out and kills six people and wounds yep. maybe a dozen more. This is the ridiculousness that we were, are looking at in today's criminal justice system. And as a judge, you can't legislate that. You've got to uh, get off the bench and go run for public office, a different public office. If, it's, if you think that there are macro changes that need to be made to criminal justice, you've got to do it through the legislature. You're listening to Real Estate Jerky here on Power Talk 1360 KFIV, and our guest today is retired Judge Stephen Bailey, candidate for California State Senate District 4. You can reach out to Judge Bailey at baileyforsenate.net. That's Bailey, B-A-I-L-E-Y, -B -A -I -I F-O-R, Senate. Dot net. And if you'd like to talk to our host, Ed Parco, MBA veteran and mortgage advisor, and president of Lending for Living, because you get some real estate issues, then dial him up, please, at 209-404-1915. That's 209-404-1915, or visit LendingForLiving.com. You can always email us. I'm the one that gets these. You call Ed, you get Ed. You, you, you email, you get me. <laughs> Radio at realestateturkey.com. Um, I love that, that that's why you're running. I love that you saw it firsthand from the bench. I love that you are addressing the fact that we have been lied to so much that it we have this huge um, group of people that are running for office and, and your position is no different. There's what, nine? How many of you, how many candidates? I, I for think there four? are eight. Eight. I think there are eight candidates, but I could be off by one or two. And we've <laughs> it had seems several like everybody of... in the district <laughs> filed a run. <laughs> it does. And I think because 
I mean, I'm going to say my two bits and then I'm going to be quiet because that's got a lot to say about this too. I, the you gave me a lot of stuff to read and I've been the reading redistri- it and I'm like, oh, geez. The redistricting is so stupid on this. I, I'm hoping the good Lord could make something really useful out of it because this redistricting, what, what was the reasoning behind this? Do you have a clue in this? You know, honestly, I believe that um, they redistrict this our particular district um, to disadvantage every incumbent um, Republican uh, that was in the legislature. Uh, Senator Borges, who represented a good portion of this, they made sure that his house was outside of the district. Um, They didn't put uh, Kevin Kiley's district uh, home in this district. Um, They moved Senator Dolly North and created as, as much as you look at the fourth state Senate district, which consists of 13 counties, um, all or portion, it really is a pretty compact district when you uh, uh, take a look at it. Um, it's got all of Stanislaus County, which I think is a benefit to Stanislaus County and to uh, agriculture here in the heart of California but it takes in the entire watershed, um, the most important watershed in California, with maybe the exception of the upper Sacramento and the Feather River. Um, We've got most of California's water um, here in our district. And so we're gonna have a voice in Sacramento, uh, unlike in the assembly or Congress, where we've got one voice Uh, speaking on our behalf in Sacramento on issues of uh, forest management, of issues of water uh, management and distribution. We're going to be able to talk in Sacramento about following the science when it comes to our fisheries and our forests. Um, You know, as I've heard, and I didn't create, you know, come up with this quote, but you either log it, graze it, or you burn it. And we've become an absolute master in this state with burning the state down. And at the end of the <laughs> in day, more ways than one. <laughs> oh, absolutely. But at the end of the day, when you burn our forest down, um, think of the carbon that your carbon footprint that you're putting into the atmosphere. Uh-huh. Um, if you're concerned about climate change, uh, the absolute worst thing that we can do, do is allow these catastrophic fires and throughout our district that's what we've seen over the last decade Uh, we've got to do a better job of being stewards of our environment and that's going to be a key uh, element of what i'm going to take to sacramento i'm a problem solver uh, at heart Um, but we need to be able to find common ground uh, with those on the other side liberal democrats and start working on uh, finding solutions to our resource management. Actually, and I want to get onto that whole thing because, um, you know, everybody, what you were talking about how we burning down everything and we don't take care of it. Well, the same thing happens with these electric cars. If people really looked at what it did to the earth to make these batteries, they would throw this all out and they don't care about that. They only care about pushing their agenda and it's got to be something about lining their pockets or something to push this because If you care about the environment, you would say, forget the electric cars because these batteries destroy the earth when they dig it up to get the elements that if you've seen these pits over in China and other places, you would go, there is no way I want this to happen. This is the worst thing we could do. But everybody's like, we got to have electric vehicles. We got to go forward with this. And it's just horrible. Please check it out. If you don't believe me, Google it. Look at what it does to the earth. Go ahead. How many ways are there to make, as our host Ed Parco says, Make California golden again. Vote, 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 and educate yourself before you vote. We'll talk more with our guest, Stephen Bailey, candidate for California State Senate District 4, when we come back. If you've got questions, and please, I hope you do, you can text or call our host, Ed Parco, at 209-404-1915. That's 209 209- 404-1915. You're tuned to Power Talk 1360 KFIV. And this is Real Estate Jerky, where we always give you something to chew on. So don't go away. Our new reverse mortgage product limits can change the way you live out the rest of your life. This is 
This is Real Estate Jerky on Power Talk 1360 KFIV. I'm Marlene Champlin, sidekick to our amazing host, Ed Parco, MBA veteran and mortgage guru and president of Lending for Living. We're talking to Judge, retired Judge Stephen Bailey, candidate for California State Senate District 4, who, by the way, I believe may have the most practical experience of any of our big field of candidates for District 4. Um, and District 4 is a redistrict. Uh, for those of you who didn't hear it last um, segment, it comes all the way from uh, Lake Tahoe and go, well, uh, Judge Bailey, it goes from Lake Tahoe all the way down to? It actually starts in Truckee, which is in Nevada County. It uh, goes through Eastern uh, Placer, all of El Dorado, which means it takes in uh, the west shore of Lake Tahoe and the Tahoe Basin, uh, which I live in uh, South Lake Tahoe, um, beautiful area. I'm proud to be from there. I served eight and a half years on the bench in El Dorado County, but it also goes down the eastern side of the Sierras, takes in uh, Alpine, uh, Mono, and Inyo counties. It goes down the west side of uh, the Sierras, taking in Amador, Calaveras, Tuolumne, and Mariposa. Then it comes out into the valley and takes in eastern Madera, northern Merced, and all of Stanislaus County. It is, you know, I kind of jokingly say that, you know, there's no place that you can't get in this district in three hours. Um, <laughs> and I, as a lawyer, I've represented, you know, clients all over California. Three hours is, you know, a simple... Uh, um, day stroll in the car. So, you know, I kind of look at uh, being able to be present in any of these counties as an easy job. Um, frankly, compared to running for attorney general in 2018, where I was in Crescent City one day and, um, you know, out in El Centro the next, um, <laughs> it was, that was um, a trip. But this is a very, <laughs> compact district. And as I said, um, you know, we have California's resource. We have California's water and California's forests and California's recreation. And, and you know, the food that's on your table today probably came from S Stanislaus County. Uh, the meat that's on your uh, table probably came from uh, Mariposa or Madera or even uh, El Dorado. I mean, we, we are California's breadbasket and I can't wait to represent it. Now, right was there something you wanted to add before we went to break last time when I was talking about the batteries and all that fun stuff about electric cars and all that? Well, just the, the production of like electricity, when you, uh, start deciding that you're going to use renewables, um, so that you can recharge those batteries, um, you know, and then you don't want to, you know, produce natural gas or oil or anything else that actually uh, powers those power plants that are, you know, producing the electricity. Um, I mean, you, if you think the cost of fuel is expensive, wait until you start having to recharge the batteries in your electric oh. car that, and yeah. pay for that electricity. Believe yeah. me, that electricity isn't going to be delivered to that charging station for free. No, it's going to cost you like you have two choices, oh. air conditioning or charge a car. Which do you want? Uh, it's, yeah, which one do you want? Because be... you won't be able to afford to do both. It's so I, I can't even go there because it's so freaking ridiculous. It um, may be so... so bad that it'll be it's... food or yeah. electricity. That's right. That's exactly right. right. Well, the um, way the inflation's going right now and everything with rates and everything. I was telling somebody the other day, all I'm going to do is go to the fuel post where they have the actual how much diesel is <laughs> super. And I'm going to say, this is your, this is your investment. So your diesel is investment by an investment rate today. Your premium unleaded is your second home rate and your unleaded is your, your, you know, regular home. That's how expensive rates have gotten. It's matching the gas prices. It's ridiculous. Oh, there's a theme here. Yeah. Jeez. Um, so, 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 um, you're listening to Real Estate Jerky here on Power Talk 1360 <laughs> KFIV. Um, and we, we're getting our guest, worked up here. <laughs> I know. Our guest is uh, 
retired Judge Stephen Bailey. He's candidate for California State uh, Senate District 4. That's us people. And um, if you want to reach out to uh, Judge Bailey, you can do that at bailey4senate.net. That's bailey, F-O-R, senate.net. And if you want to reach out to Ed, I hope you will, uh, 209-404-1915. That's 209-404-1915 or visit him at lendingforliving.com. And you can email us at radio at realestateturkey.com. Um, Marlene, before you say your thought, I don't want to forget. Hey, I want to thank you for your service. Thank you. Yeah, most people don't know he was in the Marine Corps. Yeah. Marine From Corps Reserve. Um, I was actually stationed over at Alameda. I mean, that was tough duty, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I was going to say from a squid to a jarhead, thank you for being on the show. <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I mean, I loved. Um, I was a corpsman, by the way. It, I've got some stories about those, the corpsman too, but <laughs> <laughs> that's for another time. <laughs> Okay, so we have some really good questions to ask you that we didn't talk about, but I think you're going to be fine. Do you ha who do you endorse for Attorney General? I mean, I've endorsed Eric Early. Um, okay. Eric ran in 2018 against me in the primary. Um, Eric was a new candidate, um, but he has gone out. He's he worked hard on the recall, uh, provided legal services. He's a strong conservative. Um, and frankly, I'm proud to endorse him. I think he'll be a great attorney general, a frankly, a qualified attorney general. And um, so I wholeheartedly. Could somebody somehow him. pardon David Deladen from our stupid attorney general that decided to make a project out of him? You know, I don't, I, I haven't followed that case. Um, I know about it, but I haven't followed it. Yeah, we but all know did, about it. But it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. It's it's well, ridiculous. Well, it, Which it was, they made it was an a example political out of prosecution. Yeah. Yep. You it's, don't you don't yep. think that you have political prosecutions, but you know, in the last uh, six or eight years, we've begun to see the justice system used in a way that is frightening, frankly. Yep. Um, and he was maybe one of the first to be politically prosecuted, but it hasn't stopped. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. And, and for his, I mean, it's a terrible thing. So uh, actually, I have uh, a question from our engineer. Um, he's asking, what is the yeah. solution for water deficiencies in California? You know, one, of, there's a couple different solutions. Number one, there's been significant um, scientific study on uh, when it is best to release water from our dams um, for fisheries. And a lot of the water being run down the rivers is for fisheries. And yet um, the University of California at uh, Merced and at Berkeley have done studies and we are releasing water at times when the fish do not need the water. Uh, we're not releasing the water when the fish do need the water. If we uh, followed the science, as we've been told we must, um, we would have better uh, water management. That's number one. Number two is if you take the fuels out of the forest, we've got um, uh, forests that are overgrown um, that are quite frankly sucking water up to, to um, water plants and trees that we don't need to be uh, watering. We would have greater runoff into our uh, reservoirs and streams that would help increase the supply. Um, and finally, when you burn the forest down, um, you literally pollute your water system. And um, by better stewardship of our forests, um, we will have increased supplies, not only for the consumer, not only for the fisheries, but also for our farmers. Okay, so th th how fast this goes, it goes really, really fast. Um, one of the things I wanted also um, is uh, you have a lot of experience in what I think, I love that all these young folks and inexperienced people are running. I love the idea that people are so motivated because of all the, all the abuse that's happened. I love that, but what scares me it really does is I know, cause I'm an old girl, 
I know how much time I mean, you can laugh at that. Go ahead, Jen. You can laugh. No, she, but she I worry. Has her hair done that way, so she looks older. <laughs> oh, baloney! These, these, Wait, shoot, so this. do I. I have my hair done this way. So I look older. <laughs> but what I love about you, what I love about you, is that you already know how to draft. You already know how to that. To, you know a lot of things. And I mean, talk a little bit about that before we get you out of here, so people understand what goes into this office going up to Senate, going up on Capitol Hill. You can't just go up there with your, you can't, you better know some stuff. That's absolutely true. And I think um, what makes me unique in running for this seat is I have a combination of having worked in the executive branch, the judicial branch, and now uh, running for the legislative branch. Um, Governor George Duke Manchin appointed me a Republican, by the way, to the State Department of Social Services as a um, deputy director back in the 1980s, and that dates me a little bit. Um, and I worked closely with the legislature. Democrats controlled the legislature then. We looked for common ground to be able to uh, implement policy. California has a uh, child support um, minimum guidelines now because Art Agnos and I and members of our department work closely together together to come up with a uh, uh, child support guidelines. That was something that um, uh, took compromise and took uh, hard work and working with Democrats. Um, I spent 18 years as a uh, criminal defense attorney. Um, people ask, you know, why would you want to be a criminal defense attorney and represent criminals? Well, I'll tell you why. I had a mortgage and I had three kids and I couldn't afford to work for a, a district attorney. So I, uh, I did that for 18 years, eight and a half years as a judge. I handled a broad range of cases, everything from civil to criminal. And then for the last uh, roughly four years after running for attorney general, I've spent my time representing uh, small businesses, um, individuals that have been arrested for protesting against the governor's COVID policies. And finally, I just represented um, um, Jeff Cortinas when, frankly, I thought it was a silly effort by the uh, um, board of trustees to sue him because he wouldn't wear a mask, which I can't think of anything more um, um, draconian than to sue a member of your own board um, using a secret meeting to do it. Um, and we stepped in and represented him and um, they dismissed the case. Uh, proud to have been involved in it. Uh, I was lead counsel, I appeared on his behalf. Um, but um, at the end of the day, we were successful and they couldn't bully him off the uh, board. And that was a, the Turlock School District, correct? That was the Turlock School District, yes. Yeah. Uh, yep, right here in our back. Right. And, and <laughs> listening to you talk today and talk and be on the radio with us. I appreciate you being here, but um, you, not only would I want you to defend me, I think it, you would be the right person to represent us in, in this up there. And I, I'm not, we can't endorse anybody on the show, but I'm just saying the closest thing I can get to that we is can't? what I just said. Yeah. We can't. Or no, we're supposed to be, you know, both sides. <laughs> Who said? Yeah. We're I'm supposed old. To have everybody on. I, Everybody's supposed just... to be on and we're trying to be that way. Okay. All right. I'll let right. you. You can be. Thank that. you for being here today. I just get to Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Marlene. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, well, um, let's see here. Which California do you want to live in? Uh, the one where families, food and faith are raised or the ones that only are fit to raise eyebrows? I know which one I want to live in and I hope you do too. So decide and vote to make California golden again. If you'd like to support Judge, uh, retired Judge Stephen Bailey for California State Senate District 4, reach out to him at baileyforsenate.net. That's Bailey, F-O-R, senate.net. And if you need help with real estate, we got the guy for you. I know a guy. I think his name's Ed Parco. And uh, he'll be back here shortly. But in the meantime, you can call him at 209 404-1915. That's 209-404-1915. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about the political climate and how it's affecting the real estate industry right now. Don't go away.
You can change the way you live out the rest of your life with our new reverse mortgage products from Lending for Living. Our loan limits are the highest available. Call us today at 209-846-9270 or visit LendingForLiving.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Jerky here on Power Talk 1360 KFIV, where we always give you something to chew on. I'm Marlene Champlin, sidekick to our amazing host, Ed Parco, MBA veteran and president of Lending for Living, who lets me say whatever I want. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not the one that beeps you. <laughs> I leave that for the station. <laughs> no, um, I really like this guy. I like, I like this guy for Senate district four. I was very, very angry at the way they redistrict us and, and yet to hear him uh, positioning that it's the water, it's the, it's the, almost the entire watershed for the state of California. Um, that will get you a voice. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. That Agreed. more than most people realize. Um, I like, everything about what he was talking about and what, you know, we never have enough time on the show. It's, no. it's perpetual every time I never feel like, Oh, wow. That took forever. I always feel like, but what he was talking about, he's been married for 45 years. Um, he's got three kids. He's got five grandkids and his grandkids can't live in this state because they can't afford to own and the school system failed them. And he's campaigning to change that right? I, rather I, than be like so many people who move away and throw up their hands. I mean, I know, Ed, you and I, we're here to fight it out. We, right. we are not giving up without a fight. We're not going to let this craziness continue. Not. That's right. No. I'm going to sound like a good friend of mine from when I was in the Navy. I want to fight. <laughs> Georgia. <laughs> Yeah, so every time we went out drinking, you know, not that I went drinking or did anything wrong, <laughs> but he would uh, he would get you know drink a couple of bit, and then he's like, "We won't fight." Everybody ran into. So basically, what I want to say is, right now we want to fight. This is ridiculous. What's going no, we are on. fighting. See, for me, when I meet, I want everybody else to. One thing I heard from from the judge or a retired judge was the fact that don't be afraid, right? And that should be his slogan: "Don't be afraid. Take on these people. Let's fix this California. Let's do what we need to do." We've had a, a lot of people on recently, you know, talking about their running and this kind of stuff. I think he's the first one who actually said the things that people want to hear, not just these are the. Oh no, he's. These he, are the five he's things. Yeah, know, but let he's me left. These I are left the five the things that I want to work on. He's like, this is the five things. This is ridiculous. I've been on this side of it and this side of this. We need to work. I feel that they he is a force to be reckoned with once he gets in because of what his knowledge of what he's done. Yes, his experience. Yes. I mean, listen to what he was talking about. I didn't even know that. You thanked him for your service. You know what I want to thank him for? Was that child support order. I didn't realize that was during Duke Mason's years and during his years as it's a head of social services, I, I went from getting 25 bucks, 25 bucks a month for two kids to getting, it was like overnight. To that getting, was in the 1940s. Oh, shut up. <laughs> no, but I know. 25 bucks, that's nothing. You can't even buy 20, food with that. I, tell me about it. Yeah. Tell me about it. 25 bucks. And then they passed, it changed all these orders and it superseded the court orders which was a beautiful thing. It was like, yay, ha, ha, ha. Anyway, guess what? Well, and and because there should be, I mean, it's one thing about the you know, child support that should be changed that affects us in our industry is if you're paying child support or spousal support, it's a debt against you. Why don't they just take it off your total income and then the rest of the income is yours? Because then you could actually qualify for stuff. The way they have it set up as a debt messes up people being able to own a home, even though if they lived in the same unit, with their kids and still paid the same amount to support them, they could afford a home there. That, so let me get off of that. That's something else we need to work on. But like I always say, it's the end of our show, fastest hour of the week. And I want to thank you for tuning in today. I want to thank our guest, Steve, Stephen Bailey, retired judge running for Canada for California state Senate district four. Um, you can reach out to Stephen at Bailey for Senate. Dot net. That's Bailey, F-O-R, Senate.net. 
If you missed any of today's show, you can always catch it via our podcast or, and that's through the iHeart app or wherever you find your favorite podcast apps. Next week, we got fun when we have the American Graffiti Festival chairs and the North Modesto Kiwanis Club, Brent Burnside and Charlie Christensen. Join us and we'll get to talk about fast cars, fast women and great music. <laughs> And in the weeks ahead, sorry, I added that in. In the weeks ahead, <laughs> more candidates. We have Juan Al- Alanis from State Al- Assembly Al- Di- uh, uh, District 22 and real estate trainer guru Todd Duncan, which is the guru that I've been around for since I've been in the business. Please remember to stay calm and be safe out there. We're proud to live in this land of opportunity where you can build still personal wealth through home ownership. We'll keep bringing you something to chew on here at Real Estate Jerky. We broadcast Saturdays at noon and Sundays at 10 a.m. You can, like I said, you can always find us on podcasts. If you're trying to find us, just Google Real Estate Jerky and you'll find us. And if you don't do something this year, if you don't get out and vote, don't complain when you can't afford anything. Sometimes we just Marlene, thank you for being here today. It's going to be here next hey. week. Hey, yep, thanks for graffiti. Heck yeah. Only the fair time makes me any happier. <laughs> Well, I think my MS license number is 235384, and we'll talk to you next week. Because we got small towns and farmland, folks who still make a living with their hands. Where I come from, a man is still a man.